Hey, welcome to part three of my dynamo cabinet control panel preparation. Uh, in the last episode, I finished creating the plexiglass cover finally. I got the actual control panel overlay on. Uh, you didn't really see the end result of that yet. That will be coming up later. Uh, but right now, what I want to do is I want to um, get the wiring all set up. So. I've been, I've had the cabinet set up like this for the past little while. Uh, I can still play the gun games right here. This is the wiring for the control panel uh, right here. And right here, these are the start buttons for player one and player two, obviously just the switches. Uh, but you can see a previous owner uh, cut all the wires here except for the two need it um, for the start buttons so this harness here this half is going to stick with the other control panel that I create specifically for gun games what I'm concerned about today is this con is this harness this will be the harness that we use for the six button and joystick setup for Capcom games and other JAMA games. So as you can see, I removed this from the old control panel. All of the, I don't know all, but most of the micro switches are still attached. And hopefully these Molex connectors are completely intact. So what I could do is I could just plug these in and I could go through each switch here and see what they all do. But I think it's going to make more sense if I start by uh, finding documentation on this cabinet and seeing if I can get a wiring diagram. Okay, so I searched around and the only documentation for dynamo cabinets, at least that I can find, refers to the smaller models, the HS1 and the HS2. There's absolutely no manual online that I can find for the HS5. However, the manual for the HS1 and HS2 does have a wiring diagram. It does tell us which colors in their harness uh, go to each button and switch. So the only question is going to be whether these wire colors match up uh, with the ones that would have been in the other cabinets. My guess is that they will. I don't think this company would have had a separate JAMA harness just for a separate model of cabinet. I'm sure they were all the same harnesses. So I'm going to go through and I'm just going to look at the colors on the harness. And then we'll see if that matches up to what's in the manual. And if it does, that, that gets us a lot closer to begin with. And then what we're also going to have to do is we're going to have to look at the other side of the harness to make sure that some operator didn't come along and make their own harness with their own color wires. So in other words, we're going to have to make sure that everything on this side of this harness matches the colors and the pins on this side of the harness. Okay guys, I was having some real issues when I was recording the last section, so I just decided to um, do a screen capture here and just go over uh, what my methodology was for checking out this wiring and just to verify that everything was right. So uh, what you see here is this is the one dynamo manual that's available. There's a couple other things like parts lists and stuff like that, but this is the actual manual. This has all the info on setup and like I said, the wire colors and the wiring diagram, all that good stuff. But as you can see, it's only for the HS1, HS2, HS3, and HS4. Technically, this does not apply to the HS5. So, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to, like I said, I think, I'm assuming that the JAMA harness that they use 
is universal between these and the HS5. So I'm just going to look for the diagram here. This has all the colors. And basically, I'm just going to compare it um, to these wire harnesses. And for the for this purposes of this, I just took some pictures here so we can just go over it quickly. Uh, this is the player one harness here. And what you see here is uh, we have a gray. And over here we have gray player one start. And we have a green one player left. Now it's hard to see these two, but they are orange and red. So one of them is button one, button two. Uh, and then we can see a blue here. That's probably actually blue and white, I guess. No connection. Um, I have another picture where we can see the other side of this. Uh, yeah, so yeah, blue and white. No connection. This looks like orange. So that's button one. Or this might be orange and white. Or red and white. It's definitely one of these. I'm sorry, it's so hard to see in these pictures. Um, and then we have a regular blue, which is player one down. This again is the gray. Here is, I believe this is violet. Do we have that? Yeah, player one up. So these all match with what we expect. Black is ground as we expect. And yeah, so this all looks good. And then we have player two over here. So we have a green, we can see that. And we have, and we don't have a regular green over here, but this is probably actually green and white. And yeah, we can see that right here, uh, there's white. So that's green and white, and that's no connection. This is gonna be yellow and white, or actually this is, white and yellow because it's primarily white so that is two player right these these ones are really hard to see guys because they're primarily all white we do have a yellow and white which is different than white and yellow but yellow and white's no connection but take it from me all of these are correct they all match uh, what's in this chart and they do match from end to end so I don't believe there's any wires cut from the control panel side. And I think I'm pretty much ready to just connect these up to the control panel. So all I'm going to have to do at this point is uh, at each connection on the end of these wires, I'm just going to have to match up the colors, which we have here. We have our nice little guide now. Just going to have to match up these colors with the actual buttons on the control panel. And that's going to take a lot less time than having to test every single button, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, now the harness does have a little bit of damage. Some of the the ground chain is ripped off, um, but that's all going to be easy to fix, and I'll do that as we go along. So I'm going to get started on that. And once I'm finished with that, we will have uh, the punch buttons and the start buttons and the directional controls all sorted out. All that's going to be left is the kick buttons on each side and that's where the Capcom kick harness comes into play. So we'll cover that shortly in this video. Uh, so let's start with connecting up all of these wires uh, to the actual switches on the control panel.
All right, guys, I'm just making sure that I'm untangling this as much as I can as I work on it. Uh, the more so-and-so prep work that I do, you know, the, the easier it's going to be to deal with when I actually go to stick this in the cabinet. These crimpers really suck. Well, this isn't designed for these type of terminals, but worked. Works better than this. So these terminals right here, all these grounds should be where the um, joystick hooks up. And I don't have that on the two-player side. I think that ripped off. I'll have to go look for that or recreate it. All right, so these are the three player one buttons, red, orange, brown. These are ready to go. If you're new to doing this, make sure you put your connection on the common or ground and the open. You can, you're not going to be able to see it on the camera, but there's a little diagram on here showing that this is connected to this that's closed normally, uh, and then this is open normally so that when you push the button it connects as opposed to being connected all the time until you hit the button. So that's these three. Um, one, two, three, four. These should be the four for the directions and let's see we got blue, one player down, green, one player left, yellow, one player right, and then violet, one player up. So these are the four directions for the joystick. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have grounds for those. And then, like I said, I'm going to have to find more of that ground chain for over here because we're missing some of that. But um, these should be the four um, directions here. And then we have the three buttons. Actually, where's the start button over here? Missing something. I'm going crazy. We'll figure this out in a second. Well, we have at least one star button here. But something's missing. Well, here's a wire that's soldered directly onto there, so we'll have to take care of that. how bad that is. That would barely make contact.
Okay, this is the start. This is gray. And I'm actually not using one of the new switches for the start buttons because they don't matter that much. So let's assume we can reuse this one and it'll work just fine. This is button two, player two. White and brown, this is button three. We don't have a... ground for this yet. And one... No, we have the two starts. We're just missing one, two, three, one, two. We're just missing one button here. Looks like it is white and orange. Do we have that yet? It's this one. White and orange. Okay, so that's that. That's pretty loose. I'm going to reprint that. If you're getting into this stuff, guys, you've got to get some sort of like automatic wire stripper. Don't mess with this stuff. This will take you all day. My crimps on these are so ugly, but they're tight. It's going to work just fine. It's either ugly crimps or I would go through and solder everything to these connectors, but that'll take a while. It's good enough. It's not going anywhere. Alright, so I need a ground chain here. And we have... This is... White and... Brown. Is it? There's one of these white and brown. No, that's, these are the start buttons. That's white and brown. This is white and violet. White and violet. So this is two player up. White and yellow is two player right. White and green. Two player left. And then white. And blue to player down. So we got all of our connections pretty much ready to go. I just have to um, finish off this ground chain. And like I said, I believe I, I have it pre done. It just fell off of the harness when I was depopulating it before. And we have a loose end there to connect it to. And we have a loose end here to connect it to so it can all connect together beautifully. Uh, so let me go try to find that, and then I'll continue. Okay, now we're moving on to the kick harness. This is a separate wiring harness that's added to, uh, connected directly to the board, because JAMA only supports three buttons per player. So this gives us the extra um, three buttons for each player. Uh, in other words, the kick buttons. Uh, so the plan for this is I could just put terminals in all these and just connect these directly to the buttons. Uh, but again, I do want this to be easy to swap out and move around. Um, so I'm actually going to, I am going to put terminals on these wires, but I'm also going to cut them off and I'm going to give each end a Molex. Uh, that way 
this half can stay with the board and this half can stay with the control panel. And that way, you know, if I have a situation where I want to take the board out and put it into a different cabinet or something, I'll just have to wire up another one of this end. All the terminals are on, and again, I can now just take this down and attach it, but for portability's sake, I'm going to chop all these off, and I'm going to connect them all to a Molex, and the same on the other side. All right, so I, I had thought before about splitting these up into player one and player two sides, and then attaching two Molexes. But we have eight wires here. Let's just keep it simple and we'll use one Molex. That was easy. Let's get it all done at once. Okay, I think I figured out what I need now. I had the wrong information up. This is straight from the manual for the game. So we got purple and yellow, which is this one, and then we got a pink, a red, a blue, um, pink and yellow, which is this, this is normal pink. Alright, so th yeah, this is what we're dealing with here. So, I guess what I'll do is I will do player one, top row, player two, and then the grounds. These Molex pens are just easier to work with if you use some pliers to squeeze them in a little bit. Alright, so far so good. Also the good thing about having this on a separated by a Molex is if I ever put in a game like a Mortal Kombat or something else, that will use a sep a different um, kick harness. So by having this on a Molex, all I would have to do is put an adapter in between to adapt, you know, the wires to their correct positions, and I'd be good to go, rather than having to wire a whole, you know, unhook the buttons and hook them back up with a whole separate kick harness.
There is one side completely done. All button connections and then the two ground connections. All ready to be plugged in modularly. And then this side will never have to leave the control panel. Once this is in the machine, I'm going to wire tie this to make it nice and neat. Put this aside. Alright, all finished. Here's the completed harness. Again, this side connects to the board, and these will connect to all the controls. Very easy to connect and disconnect. It's actually pretty tight right now because it's brand new. But this will loosen up over time, and this will be easy to move around. Alright, great. So. All that's left to do now is to connect all these wires to uh, and the switches to the actual control panel, which I will do tomorrow because it is after midnight and I am getting pretty sleepy. I have to wake up at 6.45, so that's going to be it for tonight. It's not it for this video, though. I will be back in the morning and we'll finish this up and hopefully everything will work out. Okay guys, it is the next day. I'm ready to attach all the switches to the actual buttons. And this is the most straightforward and I can just get it out of the way. I'm going to start with the kick harness. So, right here. I have the manual for the game which lays out all the info for the kick harness. So I am just going to connect these one by one. And I don't have the grounds connected yet. We'll, I'll connect those after I get these switches attached. So we got blue, 
which is player one light kick. Yeah, before I start this, I am going to position these all so they're not going to get in the way of anything. You'll want to get one of these. This is a button wrench. It helps you get your fingers in here much easier. These things are like two bucks. So definitely something to get right away. Next one is red. Player one heavy is pink, not to be confused with pink and yellow. And then pink and yellow is middle. purple and yellow. Now each of these gets a ground Okay, and that's it for the kick harness. I'll probably bundle this up right here. And then the other half connects to the board. All right, now the actual JAMA control harness is gonna be a little messier because it's just so tangled and it's got so much going on, so. 
I'm going to start with the start buttons. And again, I have the dynamo chart here that gives us all the colors. So And again, I just reused old switches for the start buttons because no one is going to be pushing them enough to care or notice how they feel. Although, again, at least this is a cherry switch. I don't know what this is, but it's all good. I didn't really see a need for buying brand new cherry switches just for the start buttons. All right, now I'll go out over to player one. So player one, button three. And I'm, I'm assuming that Capcom uses light, medium, heavy as button one, two, and three, but I don't know that for sure. I won't, know, you know, we won't know that until we turn that on, but I think there's a good chance that that's how it is. And then right is this one. And that's yellow. Down is this one, and it's blue. And then what's left? Violet up. And then just like the normal buttons, each switch gets its own ground connection. came off of something again. I have to make sure that these are all connected. Down is white and blue. And I keep just clicking this just to reiterate in my own mind um, which one is which. And then, where did it go? Yeah, white and yellow is right. All right, now this side is connected to this side. And this, again, this is, this is where it comes in from the actual harness. And all of these directionals are connected, but this is not.
So I just turned that a little bit to relieve the stress on the wire. I'm actually going to do that over here too because I didn't like how tight this one was. So just turn it slightly. And now we have some slack. Alright, so I'm going to throw the board in, connect it up, and the next thing you see will be the reveal and final test. Okay guys, thanks for watching my three-part series on preparing a control panel for an arcade cabinet. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to mention that I forgot to cover in the actual video. Way back in the first part, I mentioned I was going to try out a tumbler to clean up the bolts from the old control panel. I never mentioned that again, but it did work out pretty well. Some of the bolts had deep rust uh, that wouldn't come out, but all the surface stuff cleared off beautifully. And ultimately, the bolts looked good enough that I did reuse them. Now as far as the cabinet is concerned, of course there's a few more things to take care of. You see in this video that the guns are still attached to the front of the cabinet. I will be taking care of that and a few other odds and ends that have to be done. I might make a separate video for those little things and you'll see that in the future. I'm also going to make a video when I finish converting that other control panel uh, back to gun controls. Uh, but we're going to take a break from this dynamo stuff for a while. And you'll see those videos sometime in the future. I have a few other uh, projects that I want to get through and start working on. So I have plenty of ideas for videos coming up. And, and if you enjoy these kind of videos, I hope you will subscribe, uh, throw me a like maybe. And stay tuned because I've got plenty of ideas and I'm going to keep putting out videos as much as I can. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.